Well, well, good morning, Sire friend. This is Mitty Man coming at you again from Walker's Music. We got another word for the day. We want to first of all give God all the glory, praise, honor. We thank Him. And we thank Him for each and every one of you, the Sire friends, you know who you are. Oh, yeah, you see my title this morning Hell and Destruction. Hell and Destruction. My friend, I want to say something, and this is a direct quote. From the book of Proverbs 27 and 20, it says, Hell and destruction are never fooled, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. I just want to speak on it just a little bit this morning and uh, see can we touch base on a couple of things and to let everybody know. First of all, when the Bible speaks of man, most of the time, I would wager that it's speaking, the Word of God is speaking to mankind, not just the male species. So don't get, don't be fool yourself to think that, that God is talking to the male species when you see the word man. No, most of the time, and I'm just saying this is just, just a personal saying of mine, that God is speaking to mankind. When you see the word man, it is in the Bible. Most of the time, I would say just about 95% of the time, it's speaking to mankind. And that means females are included. He said, death and hell, or hell and destruction, however you want to call it, is never full. So the proverb said, the preacher, which is Solomon, said, death and hell, or hell and destruction, never full. And then he looked at mankind and said, so the eyes of mankind, male or female alike, are never satisfied. In other words, never content, lustful, lustful at heart. Oh, friends, you know what? I, 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 ooh, I, I just, I look at that with, with caution. And then I look at the, I'm like Solomon now, I looked up under, under the sun. In my own life. And I can see what this here is so very true. Have you ever noticed that no matter what you desire to have, no matter what, or item, or like me, I'm a musician, and sometimes I see different things, and or, or, or musically I think that I could use, and, and I think that I want, and if I could just get that little bit of thing, if I could get that trinket, That'll solve my problem. I'll be all right. Then I can go on and do this and that and other. Eh, wrong answer. As soon as I buy that, there's something else I see that I think will do better than that. Then when I go and get that, eh, wrong answer. I see something else that I think that'll do better than that. It's a never-ending cycle. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. I looked at under the sun. I'm like the preacher now. I'm like Solomon. I looked under the sun and I see where we got a lot of, of a lot of people that are very hyper productive. They are very productive, very productive. And it seems like everything they touch seems to turn to gold. Now, let us take, for instance, I'm just gonna use three. I mean it's more, it's more. I understand, but I, I can't talk but on three. Let's take three people from the 20th century up until now. From the 20th century up until now. In other words, the last century, what we call 20th century, we're in the 21st century now. But from, 19, from the 1900s up until right now, 20, we are in the what, 2016. So I'm gonna say from the 20th century up until now. Let's pick out three musicians, three people in the music industry that were super, or I should say hyperactive in their productivity. And let's take a look at some things. We just want to, we, we're not judging now, we just, we're just taking a look at some things. Now, in the music industry in the last, from last century up into this century, 21st century starting in the year 2000. Okay. Go back. Let us look at Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley. 
great musician, singer, actor, super productive. That was Elvis. Okay. Elvis was called the king of rock and roll. All right, let's move on a little bit forward. James Brown, the man, the hardest working man in the music business. That he had that he had that tag on his his uh, personality. Hardest working man in the music business said was James Brown, Godfather of soul. But a lot of people don't realize that James Brown was not only considered the Godfather of soul, but James Brown was really was the really the was the was the was the father of funk. People don't realize that. James Brown really had the, the, the early, he started funk, people. I mean, I know that that's argumentative, but nevertheless, they take my word for it. James Brown had a big hand in the start in the evolution of funk music. Then we came, he was like, like I said, James Brown known as the hardest working man in the music business, and he had the, the, the tag of being the godfather of soul. And I should say the father phone. Then we had Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson lived to be 50. I'm 55 this year. And me and Michael was about, I believe, about two or three years in difference in age, if I'm not mistaken. I think Michael was born in 58. I was born in 61. I think that's the way it was. I was about two or th Michael was about two or three years older than me. But at any rate, he died when he was 50. King of Pop. Hardest. That boy was a walking metronome. Do you understand what I'm saying? He was, musicians do. He was a walking metronome. The boy had rhythm. He just, I mean, what he did in 50 years musically had never been done, people. It had never been done. Now, take for instance, now he had a lot of music, music compositions. He did a lot of singing. He had a lot of records that he made. But I'm speaking of the, the album that he made called The Thriller. The Thriller. And if you're over 25 or 30 years old, you should know what The Thriller is. The Thriller album, not only was it gold, it went platinum twice. Nobody else in the history of music have ever done that. Think about it. Nobody in the history of music album went platinum twice. But Michael did. Now, let me back it up now. Let us look at these three individuals. And I'm going to try to do this with it in the bounds of 15 minutes. You got Elvis, James Brown, Michael Jackson. Three kings, three top individual in the, in, the, in, the, in the realm of music. But now this is what you got a mass of the people would say. Yeah, but they were, they, they were of the devil. They were of the devil. Come on, people. Come on, come on. Get real. Get real. You know what? Many men don't even go that route. Let me tell you something. First of all, devil ain't got nothing to do with music. God created music. Let me tell you something, people. This is what I believe now. This is what I believe. You know what? I believe God got some sounds in heaven that we never even dreamed of. In other words, I'm I'm yet to I'm I still believe that there are some sounds that God is gonna give some of us musicians. It may not be me. It may not even be you, but I believe it's gonna be some musician that God gonna look gonna download a few more sounds from heaven that He's gonna give this earth before Jesus comes. I do believe that. Because God is the maker of music. God created music. Not Satan. I wish people would stop talking about Satan. God created Lucifer and made him the way he were. Lucifer didn't have nothing to do with it. God created Lucifer. I, you hear I say God created Lucifer. I didn't say God created the devil. No, God didn't create no devil. Lucifer created the devil. God created Lucifer. Lucifer they say his, his whole makeup were pipes and different musical instruments according to sources. I don't know these people, but I do know what the Bible said. That he was, he was, a, he was, called, he was over. J Lucifer had the highest position in heaven. And that when he failed, he took, just, just to show you how influential he is, he took a third of the heavenly host with him. 
They followed him. Well, people, let me say this. Elvis, great. James Brown, great. Michael, great. Don't you realize that God is the one that gave the old guy they, they, that talent that they had? Yes, God is the one that gave them that particular talent. And guess what? They was influential over a mass of people. Now you just think about it. Now you just think about it. Had, had Elvis would have been able to live out more of his life and use that influential status that he had, he could have reached the whole lot for the kingdom of God. Satan knew that. Satan knew that. And therefore, he tried to destroy Elvis and eventually did with the drugs. Don't you see, Satan wasn't giving them anything. God had already given them what they needed to influence a, a world of people. God gave the talent, that in-birth gift to Elvis to do what he did. But Satan, with his manipulative self and his ability to... to, to not create but to imitate he took what god had given them and influenced them through through sources unseen to do and then to lead him in the way that he went eventually to his death look what happened drugs think about it now people look, look they're listening to me man just for a few minutes drugs stop elvis from being the person that god wanted him to be. It wasn't God, but Satan, with the help of Elvis, stopped Elvis from obtaining what he could have obtained. I ain't here talking about it in the music, but I'm talking about as a whole and for the kingdom of God. This is why I believe God give us musicians and everybody else at your whatever talent you got is not for you, but it's to gain and build the kingdom of God. Same thing go, let's move forward. James Brown. James Brown, same thing. Look at his life. James even had to go to prison because Satan knew he was influential and he tried to destroy him. Just like he tried to destroy you and I. He'll try to destroy you and I the same way. Look what he did with James. Drugs. Drugs. Alcohol. The, he, Satan don't have no new tactics, people. Drugs. And look, let's move forward. I can't stand too long because it'll take too long a video. Let's go on to Michael Jackson. Look what took him out. Drugs. It doesn't say whether he had any problem with the alcohol or not. But we know that it was medicinal drug, they say. Which I, I can't swear to this because I wasn't there. But the sources in the media say that it was, a, it, was, it was medical drug that took him out. Prescription drug. To make him sleep, because that's the way he got his his song. They say, well, you know what, people, I'm not gonna argue with that because songs come to me in my sleep. Different different things come to me in my sleep, and I I don't compare myself to be with Michael Jackson and the way he this is the king of the pop. But what I'm saying, people, death and hell are never full, so we are never satisfied. And I'm just going to say this to all of us, men folk, women folks alike. It's the same thing going with women folk too. We are never satisfied because, you know what? Right now, you got a lot of people that sit back. You got a lot of guys probably sit back and envy Jay-Z because he's married to Beyonce. But guess what? If you were married to Beyonce, you would want Rihanna. And if you were married to Rihanna, you would want one of the other highly sought after gals in the music industry in the, in the movie Hollywood and whatnot because guess what every one of them because you once you get what you think you want you always gonna see something else that you thought that and that you think you want because death and hell is never full so the eyes of man Bible tells you is never satisfied so what we must do as individuals we must become content knowing that you can't have every man sister Man, brother, you can't have every woman. You see, you must be content with what you have. And that you don't have, you might, you better be glad, satisfied. There's a reason why you don't have it. Because most of the time, it's going to lead to your destruction. Ask Solomon. Solomon had a thousand women, people. 
a thousand. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. In other words, 300 mistresses on the side. He had a thousand women, and then he had a nerve to write who could find a virtuous woman. It sure wasn't him, and he should know, so you ought to take your, take your uh, pattern after Solomon. We're never satisfied. And guess what? Nobody is an exception to the rule. We all suffer the same thing. So what I'm saying, people, musicians, fellow musicians, guys and gals alike, be satisfied and realize that use your gift for the glory of God. I'm going to help two of my former choir members today. I got to go out there and I'm going to meet them out there in my studio to help them get ready for an engagement that they have on Sunday. And, I'm, you know, I, do, I often love that. You know, that's just my way. But whatever it be, I do it for the glory of God. Not to bring no light on myself. But we do all for the glory of God. So I'm, it's just something to throw out there for people to remember. Death and hell, death and destruction, hell and destruction, however you want to call it, is never full. So your eyes is never going to be satisfied. You've got to make a decision that you're going to be content because you're always going to see somebody better. I don't care how good you think you're at keyboard. There's always another person that can do a little bit more. Your job is not to keep up with, with the Joneses. Your job is to use what God has given you to your best ability and cut the deck at that. And we're going to cut that video off right there. We're going to say whatever you get, whatever you get into. If God's not in it, best you come out of it because it's going to come to nothing. And remember, people, hyper-productive people, Satan is their enemy. He don't want you to be that way because you will bring glory to God. And he will try to take you out. And most of the time it's going to be through alcohol and drugs. And he gets your head big. When people start bragging on you, stay humble, people. Stay humble. Don't, don't, let, don't let it go to your head. That, that you, you are certainly going for a fall when you let that happen. So this is a man saying, whatever you get, whatever you get into it, God and in it, come out of it. It's going to come to nothing. And we'll see you on the next video, next Bible study, whichever comes first. Peace and goodbye.